Thank you for the introduction. No disclosures. Um, so we know about SCAD that it's a rare type of a heart attack. Um, there's no screening test for SCAD, um, and uh, there's no prevention. 66% of patients with SCAD present with a, uh, some kind of stressor, usually emotional or physical. There are no established guidelines yet on how to deal with SCAD. And uh, after discharge, patients and physicians to uh, uh, face many challenges. Um, so uh, in SCAD population, everything starts from the first event. First event. Uh, uh, in, uh, so there is no primary prevention for SCAD. So all efforts are directed to reduce the risk of uh, recurrent SCAD and increase the quality of life. Uh, so this graph shows, uh, uh, this is a new graph. Uh, this is based on uh, 560 patients local BC cohort. Uh, I took all the events in the cohort and lumped them together to show that the new de novo recurrent SCAD actually represent 42% of all SCAD, like all the maze in SCAD population. It's by far the, the most common event in SCAD major event in SCAT uh, population. We've seen this uh, diagram already many times. It shows that the uh, patients after their initial SCAT event continue to be symptomatic. And the typical chest pain is the most common uh, symptom in patients post-SCAT. Uh, so uh, we know that SCAT patients, is, uh, the SCAT population is different from traditional uh, coronary artery disease patients. Uh, they're mostly female, uh, they're much younger, they have much lower prevalence of uh, traditional cardiac risk factors, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, and they have a high prevalence of uh, depression and anxiety. Um, so the, this little study was actually made by uh, comparing uh, questionnaires and uh, entry uh, into the cardiac rehab uh, program. Um, patients complete like, uh, a few questionnaires at the entrance into the rehab, and uh, we can see that depression and anxiety uh, are much more prevalent in patients with SCAD. Um, so there are uh, quite a few challenges uh, uh, that patients face after their discharge. There are no established guidelines. Um, Non-cardiologists uh, don't have adequate knowledge about SCAD. There is no established treatment or prevention, and only BGH has so far a SCAD-tailored uh, cardiac rehab program. Um, so there are major obstacles, psychological obstacles, in, uh, in patients with SCAD. It's a fear of recurrent events, a fear of exercising, fear of medications, and fear of unknown. Um, so the SCAT program uh, was established in BGH by Jackie um, in 2013. Um, so there are a few goals and it's, uh, to deal with challenges, which I already listed. Uh, there are a few knowledgeable SCAT specialists. Uh, there is a tailored cardiac rehab program. We have a research program. We can evaluate all the interventions. Um, we do knowledge disseminations. We have a referral system into the SCAT clinic. And we have now standardized orders, SCAT orders at VGH. Uh, again, this is the same diagram. Uh, recurrent SCAT is our number one public enemy. Um, this is graph shows just unadjusted uh, uh, risk of recurrent SCAT. And we can see already that patients who were diagnosed with SCAT before 2013, before the, the SCAT program was introduced, have a much higher uh, recurrent SCAT rate. Um, and we can see that the, the rate is still climbing down. Uh, and so the possible mechanism of that is the, the, uh, the combination of cardiac rehab, beta blockers, and avoidance of triggers. And now I'm letting Terry to talk to exactly what's going on in the cardiac rehab program. Yes, thank you. All right. So, uh, some of my slides are going to fly through because Dr. Alipour is going to be talking about some of this in a few minutes. So, um, I'm Tara, I work in the cardiac rehab program uh, with this, all the SCAD patients that come through VGH, pretty much. So, we started our cardiac rehab, put all our SCAD patients, trying to get them into one class together, mainly for the peer support, um, created this 
first dedicated uh, rehab program for SCAD, a little published paper. A big piece of this is education, so we try to educate our folks on triggers so they know what kind of things they should be thinking about, what kind of things that could potentially be, could contribute to SCAD. Um, these are just some, there's others, but these are some of the main ones. So uh, here we go. Way back in uh, 2011, we had our first two patients, whoops, and uh, Thelma and Louise over there. In the <laughs> I was trying to think, like, who, what, what really, you know, uh, signifies our women? And I'm like, Thelma and Louise, like, they're pretty spunky ladies that come into our clinic. Um, so the gym was pretty empty. Now we have, we have over 170, I think maybe 175 um, SCAD patients, uh, five men. So we're pretty busy now, lots of fun, lots of good stuff. Um, again, so this fear of excess, we're going to go through a couple of the big fears, how we work through it. So um, everybody comes, they have a stress test beforehand, gives us all that information on how, how to exercise. Um, we give them the education on to you know, what perceived exertion is, how it should feel while you're exercising, what your target heart rate should be, um, understanding, you know, when they should slow down, symptoms they may have, um, really following them. They're in a group, but we work with, a, you know, a bit one-to-one -to, -one, um, to make sure they're really individual, getting an idea of what it should feel to them, what they should be doing, and it's comfortable and they feel safe. It's, I always tell them this is a good place for you to, you know, try to, you know, give yourself a little bit of room to exercise and test test it out a little bit more, and not at home on your own. And then we also work, we establish their exercise program, and then with plans for when they graduate, what are they going to be doing when they're not coming to us anymore? And what are they doing on the other days? So, um, we're going to pop through this quick. We explain to them about, you know, resistance training, um, weightlifting um, limits, avoiding isometrics, so let's explain to them what that, what that means, what does it feel like. Um, really emphasize that when they're lifting, pushing, pulling, making sure that they're not straining, to listen to their body so that they're not bearing down, they're not um, having, you know, any kind of motions that would cause alsalva and high blood pressure, that kind of thing. Um, avoiding competitive sports and avoiding high intensity and um, no contact. Um, a piece of this is through rehab, we're able to talk to them a lot. I hear, you know, we see them at least every week. Sometimes they drop in more, so we have a lot of time to get to know them and really try to reinforce and explain and educate the medications, why they're taking this. I think it's a lot easier for someone to understand if you know why you're taking it, if you talk about recurrence and how a beta blocker helps to reduce recurrence, it's a little easier for them to swallow that pill. Um, this is another piece when I get on the phone with people or, you know, they get referred and they're like, I don't know if I want to come, um, or people that aren't coming regularly for whatever reason. We've got people coming from all over BC because they, even for a month, just to try to um, kind of get some guidance before they go back home. But um, we looked at um, SCAD rehab versus people that didn't participate in SCAD in rehab who had SCAD. And they're... Um, MACE rates were, were much lower if they participated in rehab. So I you know, try to explain to them why, what they could get out of it. You know, the fear of recurrence is huge. So you know, this could be, hey, you want to be in that 4%, not that 26%. So you know, let's try to give it a shot. They got education. Um, each exercise class, they have a 20-minute education session. We talk about you know, conventional um, uh, risk factors for coronary disease. Plus, of course, I um, have a SCAD-specific talk with a women's heart health um, education, talk about medications, um, nutrition. Um, our social worker does it, comes and does a talk on stress management, of course. Um, we've got nutrition programs. Um, the mindfulness program that we um, have is really uh, well-loved, well-participated um, in. Uh, there's meditation, got yoga more of a flow path in yoga. So um, it's a great, uh, lots of resources. So I always tell them this is here for you. You should you know, really try it out while you're here. Um, psychosocial support, like South Andrew, it's a really high um, high need in this population, You know, even more so than the regular uh, coronary disease. So we do a lot of counseling. A big piece, I think, is that peer support. I know it's 
it may be a bit unrealistic in other places. We're fortunate because we're three floors down from Dr. Saw and her patients get referred and you know we all end up in a happy place on Friday afternoons together. But it sure is helpful when they've got each other to chit chat together, um, pass on ideas like I feel like this. Did, you, did your doctor tell you that? Um, I'm taking this. Why are you taking that? So they, you know, it's it's really good that connection that way. Um, the group has. Um, they, um, Andrew referred to the questionnaires. Um, if they have high levels of depression, anxiety, um, stress on their questionnaires, um, we definitely we'll talk to them about um, seeing our, our counselor. Uh, Gwen's our social worker. She does counseling. We also have a psychiatrist who works a, kind of a half a day a week with us. So there's a lot of resources there. If it's something that's more long-term um, requirement for long-term therapy, then we try to um, set them up with something in their community so that uh, they have a connection there and they can continue with uh, more long-term therapy there. Um, the group on its own um, has created a SCAD BC, this nice little logo up here. Um, they've created a SCAD BC support group. So the SCAD BC support group meets once a month approximately. Um, and they it's, it's basically the alumni through uh, rehab who've graduated and then through our Facebook uh, page and word of mouth. They've uh, connected with other people who have then meets up with the group. Um, and sometimes they meet with the group and find out about cardiac rehab and then they come knock on the door and, you know, what do I, can I get in here? Um, so, specifically, um, there's some things definitely to think about. Um, again, it's a really young group. Um, they're super motivated because, you know, this is the last thing these people expect. Um, they want to get back to their life. They want to get back to the things they want to do. Um, so they're they're quite open to uh, getting in, and, and uh, they usually like. Sometimes I get a phone call like four days after discharge. Can I start tomorrow? I'm like, no, no, no. You need to wait a little bit and heal, and we'll get you in a stress test in a, you know, six to eight weeks. But um, they're very interested. They want a lot of information. They want a lot of education. Um, the psychosocial supports are really important, and and then I. They're like the ambassadors into the rest of the world. So um, we try to connect them up with online, um, like SCAD Alliance, so that they can download information, take it to their GPs, take it to, have it in their pockets to give to paramedics, that kind of thing. So educate, educate, educate. Um, uh, talking through Andrew, they're working on an online resource for patient education. Um, He's trying to standardize the discharge and hospital orders and uh, just getting it out there beyond um, VGH. That's all. Thanks.